Chernobyl is one of the most recognized nuclear sites in the world, but not for a good reason. The reactor meltdown in 1986 became a worldwide symbol for how dangerous nuclear meltdowns can be. In the height of the Cold War, when the United States and the Soviet Union were in a nuclear arms race, this disaster spread fear of what could happen if a nuclear bomb is dropped. Thankfully, that didn't happen, but the Chernobyl meltdown has many dark secrets that most people don't know about. That being said, here are five of the darkest facts about the Chernobyl disaster. It took days for the Soviet Union to admit a disaster occurred at Chernobyl. When radiation alarms went off in Sweden over 600 miles away, the Soviets made an official announcement that an accident occurred. A few months later, they claimed that 31 people died within the span of several months due to the radiation. However, their death toll was debated by the International Committee for years. Once the United Nations had an official conference on the incident, their estimated death toll was over 4,000 people. Other organizations claimed that 6,000 people in the cleanup crew alone were killed. One organization even claimed that over 200,000 were killed within 10 years of the incident. This led to speculations that the Soviet Union may have tried to hide how many people were initially killed at Chernobyl. Mikhail Gorbachev, the leader of the Soviet Union at the time, may have had a reason for this. This was his first year in power, and he was concerned with the domestic portrayal of this disaster. After all, Gorbachev admitted himself in 2002 that this disaster may have led to the demise of the Soviet Union. While we don't know what the official death toll is, hundreds of thousands of citizens were exposed to excess amounts of radiation. The nearby town of Pripyat had a population of almost 50,000, and over 600,000 people were sent to the site to contain the disaster. Some firefighters claimed that the radiation was so strong that they could taste metal in the air miles away from the incident. Because of all the conflicting numbers, we may never know just how deadly this disaster was. How did these people die? I mean, we're talking a million people dead from this nuclear plant accident. How? They died of multiple different kinds of diseases, from cancer to heart disease, brain damage, uh, thyroid cancer, but many, many children died in utero, in other words, before they were born, or died of birth defects after they were born. How did these scientists determine 985,000 deaths as a result of Chernobyl? Based on medical data that were available to the scientists. Radioactive rain was prominent throughout Europe after the Chernobyl disaster. In fact, rain was found as far from the site as Northwest Ireland. It's possible that radioactive materials were spread even further into the Atlantic Ocean, but weren't detected due to the fact that no detectors were placed out there. The groundwater was contaminated because of the radioactive isotopes in the rain. Fruits and vegetables throughout Europe also became contaminated, although not in deadly amounts. However, some scientists speculate that it could be responsible for the increased cancer rate. Before the disaster, thyroid cancer in children was incredibly rare. About a year after, the rate of children getting this disease shot up over 200% worldwide, and the rate of nearby countries was never calculated. They believed that cows digesting radioactive rain on the grass passed on the isotope through their milk. With radioactive rain discovered as far north as Sweden, it's highly possible more made its way into the Arctic. The effects of radioactive rain are short-lived. As ice or snow, it remains frozen for decades and can slowly be released back into the environment. Combined with other nuclear fallout from weapon testing in northern Russia, the Arctic may be hoarding up radioactive isotopes that can all be released back into nature when the snow and ice melt. When this happens, it could damage the Arctic ecosystem, and its effects could be much worse than expected. Many people believe that the area around Chernobyl is currently completely void of any life. However, that is untrue. Instead, most species of wildlife are actually thriving at Chernobyl. The original exclusion zone contains a 30 square mile radius, and that zone is about 1600 square miles today. Inside this radius is an area called the Red Forest, which gets its name due to the reddish color of the trees, which was caused by high amounts of radiation. Many of the trees in the forest are dead but still standing. This is because the fungus that typically breaks down the trees was also killed by radiation. For this reason, these trees are nicknamed the zombie trees. One of the interesting effects of radiation is the impact on birds. 
The genetic mutations have resulted in birds having smaller brains, and this may be the case for other animals as well. However, the Chernobyl exclusion zone has become a sanctuary for wild animals, especially large mammals. Wolves, bears, and moose are experiencing thriving populations. One study suggests that wolves may be thriving more in Chernobyl than in Yellowstone National Park. Scientists say that the radioactive effect on the surrounding nature is less than what the human impact would be thus cultivating an environment where several species can thrive. It is always a sad moment to discover that a nuclear plant meltdown has less of an impact on nature than humans do. The Chernobyl cleanup was a big task. The Soviet Union originally used robots supplied by Germany to attempt the cleanup. This was one of the first time robots were used to clean up a disaster. However, the technology to do this wasn't quite there. The metal on the robots also melted due to the radiation. Because of this, firefighters and a specialized cleanup crew were sent in on foot. Radioactive protective barriers were installed to help protect them, and they could only clean up one minute per day to avoid prolonged exposure. These men were later called the bio-robots, as they did the work the robots couldn't. Unfortunately, some of these men died and had to be buried in welded shut coffins to prevent radiation from their body contaminating the environment. During cleanup, the workers discovered that one receptor was melting down and melting through the power plant, creating a lava-like substance of radioactive isotopes and metal. This substance was so hot, it was melting the concrete. Underneath the plant was a reservoir full of coolant material. If those two combined, which they were on track to do, a second explosion would have occurred. This time, the fallout zone would have been about half of Europe. Potentially millions could have been killed due to radiation sickness, and the economic impact could have set the world into a Great Depression. Three brave men ended up going down to the tube and draining the water manually, and saved Europe from a potential catastrophe. Nicknamed the Suicide Squad, they knew the risks, but also knew what would happen if they didn't go. They entered the dark reservoir, full of radioactive water, to find the valves, and many considered this mission to be like finding a needle in a haystack. According to legend, each of the three men were killed. However, it was discovered later that two of the three are still alive today and have yet to experience any adverse effects. Thirty-three years after the Chernobyl incident, people are still in danger from being affected by the radiation. In 2015, wildfires throughout Russia were heading for Chernobyl and nearly caused the nearby forest to catch fire. After Chernobyl, the nearby trees were met with high doses of radiation and they subsequently died. As previously mentioned, the radiation killed off the fungus and germs that would normally eat these trees. The animals that spread their fungi are also avoiding the area due to lack of vegetation. These dry, dead trees make perfect kindling for a forest fire. If they would have caught fire, radioactive particles could have been spread throughout the atmosphere. That was a close call and it can easily happen again. The area created to contain the radioactive effects of the nuclear disaster is highly susceptible to wildfires. Droughts throughout Eastern and Central Europe increase the risk of this happening too. However, that isn't the only thing putting people at risk. The sarcophagus created in order to secure Reactor 4, which is the reactor that caused the explosion, isn't fully secure. Some experts say that a second explosion is still possible, although further advancements in technology are reducing the risk. It was recently announced that the sarcophagus will be dismantled and replaced with a new type of containment device. Some experts warned that this could put the entire area at risk again if things don't go smoothly. The project hasn't started yet due to issues with funding. Let's hope that the containment lasts long enough for technology to make sure the area is safe once again. As of now, the area won't be safe to live in for 20,000 years. 30 years may have passed, but Chernobyl is still a dangerous place to live. Mm -hmm. On April 26, 1986, a botched systems test sent clouds of nuclear material across Europe and sent radiation levels soaring. It was the worst nuclear meltdown in history. Video from the time showed a facility in ruins as rescue workers surveyed the damage. And now, as the 30th anniversary approaches, Greenpeace's Rashid Alimov says little has changed. 
достаточно сильное загрязнение. Хозяйства и так далее. Here in Russia's Bryansk region, the radiation has touched every aspect of people's lives. It is in the food they eat, in the milk and water they drink, on the children's playgrounds, and in the soil where their vegetables grow. And that is all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button. I will leave a link down below to the sources, footage, and the music I used for this video, along with links to my Twitter and my Instagram, both of which are to Burke321. But like I said, that's all for now. As always, until next time.